Hey everyone, so in today's video, now that all the car porn fibre has arrived, we are going to be attempting to fit the bonnet onto the Evo. So here is our super sexy carbon bonnet from Rally Tech in the UK. That is what we're going to be fitting today. And we need to also take the mesh from the original bonnet to drop that onto this bonnet. And we also need to fit the air catches, which are hiding in this box here. We need to drop them on too because this thing doesn't support a standard catch. So the first thing we need to do, I will weigh these things as well because I keep forgetting to do that of late. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to get the mesh out of the original bonnet and then we need to uncouple things from the original bonnet and then get the original bonnet off the car. So let's do that, shall we? Okay, so that's it, bonnet off, one man job, four bolts, dead easy, nothing more to say about that. Cars without bonnets somehow look dead good. Um, don't know what it is, maybe it's just me, but here we have the OEM bonnet. That bonnet weighs 9.4 kilos, and the carbon bonnet from Rally Tech weighs 4.8. So that's quite a nice little saving and it's up front, which is the heaviest part of this car. So kind of chuffed with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop the bonnet on um, and get it kind of roughly fitted into place so that kind of the panel gaps and everything are fine. And then I'm probably gonna do all of the modifications and fitting of the air catches and stuff and the washer jets and the mesh. I'm gonna do all that probably on the car and I'm just gonna put a cover under the engine bay, kind of underneath the bonnet, just to stop any kind of dust and carbon and crap getting into the engine and the filter and what have you. So let's get the bonnet on. Uh, let's see how it looks first of all, before we start tightening things up, because it's always exciting to see new stuff on your car as quickly as possible. That is it, job done. Bonnet fitted, on to the next job. No, not really. Um, obviously, but I have fitted some nice new shiny bolts, not tightened on both sides, but we have our bolts in place there now and everything kind of lines up okay. I think need to do a bit of adjustment, which I think on this car is done not on the hinge that goes through the bonnet, it is on the hinge part that is on the body of the car. I think that is how you adjust and kind of get the angle and what have you right because the panel gap is not bad. I mean, it's even, but it's further, it's closer this side than it is the other side. Um, but the front is actually not bad, really. Um, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Again, like Rally Tech do some really good stuff, like their mirrors just went straight on the car. Yeah. There's not a lot needed, I don't think, but the adjustment is the thing that's a pain in the ass, but that's something that, again, you can do on your own and just mark up on the car and stuff. So I'll do that off camera at some point in the video, but the next thing we wanna do now is we wanna fit up the washer jets. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Uh, and then we can have a look at getting the mesh into place. Okay, that's the washer jets fitted, looking okay. I did, excuse the hair, um, I'm putting it down to it being the morning. I did scuff the lacquer when I was filing out the holes for the washer jet, but I've managed to save it just about with some of the Purest polish. I used the medium grey polish, Ugh, but these things do happen. Uh, underneath, you probably can't see, but um, we've got our stay in place now. I didn't video that, but that was just copying the original, which is there. And then I've put in the clips, which you can't see because it's too dark. Put in the clips for holding the um, line in place for the washer bottle fluid. And that's just matching the originals. I just measured the spaces and everything and lined everything up. 
So that is all done. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the mesh and we're going to start with the NACA duct first. So I'm just going to tidy the NACA duct up a little bit. I'm not going to video that because it's boring, but this is our options here. So we've got the original NACA duct there, which is obviously a different shape, a different size. I've got some spare mesh there from Biltimer and I've also got some spare mesh from the original bumper that I cut up. This is the um, mesh that I used on the original and if we have a look on the car, so that just needs to be kind of bonded in but that will go sort of like that there and then hopefully you can see they're all looking good. So I think I'm just going to copy that shape and make it out of the original and then just bomb that into place. So I will get that cut down to size as well and then we can pick up the action, me bonding that into place and then we're going to move on to the big uh, vents. And the big vents, I have a cunning plan. So there's two options, you can either just bond in some mesh which won't match the original because you can't get the original mesh. Um, so I kind of don't want to do that, but most people do that. I want to use the originals if I can. So these are the originals here. And if you look on the underside, I mean, they're pretty heavy, but they have this frame that basically slots in, as I explained, I think earlier, um, to the original bonnet. But you can see here these little spot welds that are holding what I'm assuming is the mesh and the rubber front in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those uh, welds out and then hopefully we can get the top bit off and then just drop that in and then seal that in um, from the back and from the front maybe, but work that out. But that is my plan to use these, so. A few moments later. Okay, I've got a bit ahead of myself and I have cut off the rubber fronts and I've also cut out the uh, mesh from both sides. I've done a better job of the driver's side than I have of the passenger side, but that's always the case. When you do something the first time, you don't do such a great job always. And then the second time you do it, you kind of do a better job. So it is what it is. But um, I did not engage my brain. Of course, the mesh is spot welded to the metal frames that bolt to the bonnet. So I now have loose mesh and I now have loose rubber. So there's three ways I can do it. I can either use the rubber frame and then put the original mesh and bond that in and then sink that into the bonnet. The other option is that I use aftermarket mesh, which is that stuff there, which I don't wanna do with the rubber. And the final option is that I have to just use the aftermarket mesh and no rubber at all. So what I'm gonna do, which is probably dangerous because it's a carbon bonnet and once you cut stuff off it, you can't put it back, is I'm gonna cut out the holes in the, show you, in the bonnet, I'm gonna cut these out here you can see on the uh, original i'm going to cut these out to be the proper size for the rubber to kind of just sink in and be held in tightly that is my plan so i will do that now try one side first and see how we get on um hopefully it works if it doesn't then got a very expensive um, doorstop. Don't know what, what can use it for, to be honest. But uh, this is the next step. Once that is done, then we can kind of get the mesh on and stuff. And then it's onto the air catches and we're pretty much there, really. One eternity later. Okay, much, much mucking about with this, much trimming. And you can see the difference now between that side and this side, which has got a big border on it. So now with a bit of luck, we should be able to press this in and it should stay in place. And once we know that that works, then we can just repeat on the other side and then we can kind of get the mesh bonded into place and so on and so forth and move on to the knacker duct and then the error catches. So let us see if this works. It's always nerve wracking doing stuff like this. Hey, there we go. So that is the OEM rubber fitted and as you can see looks so much better than that on the other side so i'm going to bugger off now for a spongebob and cut this out so we can get the rubber in on that side and then we'll rejoin the action with that done 
um, and then I will show you about bonding the mesh and stuff into place and kind of getting that bit sorted and then obviously we'll do our little bit with the knacker duck too. 12 seconds later. Okay, so there we go. Holes all cut and nice and neat and tidy. To be honest, if you run this without mesh, which some people do, this is kind of as good as you want it to be anyway. It's, I think it looks really good, but I want mesh because I don't want crap going in the engine bay, like, you know, birds and small animals and things. So um, I'm gonna take the bonnet off the car and then I'm gonna do the mesh and stuff um, with the bonnet on its back so we can kind of hold it in place with weight and things like that to let it set. So I will do that off camera and then obviously we'll come back after a SpongeBob and we will then kind of start getting things sunk in and fitted into the bonnet before we can then get the bonnet adjusted and then do the aero catches. You can see here bits of mesh all looking good and then the other mesh is over there on the bench, um, sat in black course and um, one thing I would say is that to adjust the bonnet and get the bonnet sitting differently sadly you need to remove the cowl for the windscreen wipers which is probably just a few screws I'm removing the wipers uh, arms themselves which is two bolts dead easy but um, you can see here there's one bolt there that's visible but then the other bolt is under here somewhere so I'm going to take that off because mine's tatty anyway and respray it and tidy it up um, and then obviously once we've got everything done we can get the bonnet on the car get it sat right and then as I keep saying move on to the air catches which is the last job but um, anyway on to Spongebob uh, back in a sec a little longer than a few minutes later okay so got a bit ahead of myself and I've done all the mesh and sealed it into place apologies for not videoing me doing that. The reason why I didn't video me doing that is because I wasn't quite sure how to do it with the uh, vents and it's very time consuming, it's very boring, it's not difficult, but it's very, very messy. You get sealing all over yourself. Um, my fingers are still covered in it like one day on. It's been sat now, it's been cured properly over 24 hours and we've got the little paint cans holding the mesh down into place. I'll just show you how I did it if you wanna do the same uh, and then we can kind of move on from there. So, we get these off. So we don't need them anymore. What I did was I put a little tiny bead around the carbon edge there. Then I pushed the rubber in, that was a bit messy. But then I put another bead of silicon all around the edge of the rubber and then put smoothed it into place with a glove, with my finger. And then for the mesh itself, I put a bead of silicon all around the inside edge, put the mesh in place and then silicon on top of that and did the same with my finger. And then on the knacker duct, you can see what I've done there. It's just putting a bit of silicon on it. Hopefully you can see that. Again, this car, these cars, I don't know how they kind of absorb light, but they do. So that is it. We're ready to put it back on the car, which is cool. Um, I didn't video, obviously, me taking off the cowl for the windscreen wipers, but I will do a video of me putting it back. But you can see now that we have the one bolt there and one bolt there to adjust the hinges. So next thing to do is to get the bonnet back on the car and then get the hinges adjusted. And then once we're happy with that, then we can attack the aero catches, finally. Okay, so you can see where the original position was of the hinge brackets marked it up with pen both sides so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to loosen off those two bolts and then with them loosened off i'm going to drop the bonnet back down because i can get to the rear bolt with the bonnet down jiggle the bonnet around get it how i want it and then i'm going to tighten up those rear bolts and then hopefully we can open the bonnet tighten up the front bolts and we are done Okay, there we go, bonnet on, pre-aero catch. Kind of see the fitment, first time seeing it on the car properly with the uh, mesh and everything, but all good there. I've checked it, measured it both sides. You can see the mesh probably in there. You can see the OEM rubber and mesh there. Looking pretty good. So I just need to make two holes for the radiator, which I forgot I had to do on the original bonnet. See them here, had to make 
this hole here and that hole there and I had to cut this out here but I don't think I have to do that on this new bonnet uh, but I need to make those two holes so the bonnet will sit a bit more flat uh, and then we can kind of crack on with the air catches so I'll just do that come back in a second and then yeah we can um, I'll show you my technique for aero catches and where we want to put them on this car Okay, so we've got our aero catches now. These are the locking overbody type. So that'll sit on top of the bonnet. That'll go underneath the bonnet and then kind of clamps together like that, holds it in place. Anyone who's familiar with these knows how they work. Um, I've fitted these now to so many cars, I have lost count. I've got these on the back of the Evo as well. Um, so a lot of people, I have done my research, seem to fit the pins into the rubber there and sort of bolt through the top. I'm not convinced that I like that idea because I can't figure out how you ultimately secure this into place um, because the rubber is 12 mil below the metal and you'll need to cut this down a lot to fit that. Yeah, I'm not sure how you use the nuts on these to make it that, you know, there's no chance of this rubber failing, coming out and your bonnet popping up. So. What I'm going to do is, I've seen a few people do this as well. I mean, people obviously go along this bar at various points, but this is the favourite point, which I just, I, I tried to figure it out, can't. If anyone can tell me how to do it, please do. It'll be interesting to know, but it just doesn't seem to work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go just a little bit left of this kind of pinhole here where the metal's been pressed together underneath. And I'm going to mount the pin sort of here like that. So the first thing I need to do is get the pins mounted both sides. Um, and then once the pins are in, probably need cutting down because they're very long, um, get the pins into place and then we can work out where they hit the bonnet on the underside so we know the holes to drill on the bonnet. Kind of go from there. Okay, there we go. Our pins are temporarily fitted. Same height each side. That's straightforward. I need, apologies for my hair, it's a mess. I need to trim the pin length because it's fouling on the headlight um, rubber cover for the plugs at the moment. But uh, this will do for now. So the next thing I want to do now is put a little bob of paint on the top of each pin. And then once we've done that, shut the bonnet, see where the paint mark is, drill a hole in the bonnet. Do the same thing again, shut the bonnet when we get to the outer skin, drill a hole through. And then once we've done that, then we can get onto my little template that I'll show you that I've made, that I've kept from other aero catches that I've done, that will give us the perfect shape and fitment and position and everything for the aero catch itself. Then we can cut it out, get it sunk in, and we'll be done. A few inches later. Okay, we are finally through the bonnet. And you can see that the plan has worked perfectly. So I'm at the A team. Um, the hole that I've drilled is exactly where the pin is underneath. It's the same both sides. So now we can make use of the little template that I've made from the Aero Catches box. And we can put that on the car and then work out the angle that we want and everything. And then tape it in place and get cutting out essentially. So what we're going to do is put it on the car sort of like this get the position that we want right and then tape it into place and then it's just a case of drawing around it and then cutting it out with the dremel and we are done so i will get that sorted and in place and then we can get cutting Okay, there we go that's our hole made but obviously the air catch if we fit it drops into place fine but it fouls on the inner skin of the bonnet so the next thing we need to do is we need to just drill some pilot holes on the underside here like through the top to work out where we need to come through on the back and then just cut out the back side the same so that the air catch will fit flush
Alrighty, so we've got our little inner hole roughly cut for now and I've finished smoothing the outer hole and just marked up through here the holes that the screws are going to go through the bolts are going to go through but as you can see sits in perfect all good so I will now bugger off off camera and I'm going to tidy up the inner side and I will get the passenger side done the same so back after a sponge bob with it ready for us to sort out the pins and mount up the uh, air arches properly onto the bonnet two thousand years later okay there we go all tidied up so i've made the holes now for the air arches to go through and sort of cleaned everything up and the hole underneath i'll show you that is basically the size of the outer um, retaining piece of the aero catch. That's the same both sides, same position and everything. So that's what I've gone for with that. Um, and I've shortened the pins by six centimeters and that is the perfect height for this car at least. Um, so all we need to do now, I need to do a few bits like tidying up the back of the headlights and I need to put the cowling on, which I'll show you how to do at the end. But um, before that, it's just a case of dropping the air catches in now um, and then just putting the captive nuts into the backs here. So these little nuts just press in to the six points there. So you don't need a span or anything on the back. Uh, and then we can get the air catches on, just do the final adjustment with the pins, with the height and tighten the pins up. And uh, that is it. Finally, the job is... Okay, so I didn't have to do anything with the pins in the end. I just needed to tighten them, put some thread lock on them. So they're on the lowest possible setting that they can be on. And obviously everything here is looking tidy. And if we shut the bonnet, you'll see. Absolutely spot on, like amazing. It's rare that that happens. Usually adjusting pins is a painful process, but sorted so the last thing we need to do is fit this thing here get that back on the car because i didn't show you me taking it off i'll show you me putting it back on and uh, then that is it so let us just get that on now and then we are done And there we go, we are done with this little job. Um, I'll put up some clips with music as I always do. Well, not always, but sometimes I do uh, at the end of this video just to show you things in a little bit more detail. But um, hopefully this has been helpful for anyone who wants to fit a carbon bonnet on their Evo, especially if it's a Rallytech one. Now you know what you can do and what you can't do. Well, you know what you can do. We've not discovered what you can't do. But um, thank you for watching. Uh, any questions, just give me a shout as always. But uh, yeah, until next time.